Oh boy, this episode is um, going to be quite interesting. Um, mm-hmm. To preference, um, this is a last minute switch up. Originally, Kat and I had uh, an original episode, a filler, if you will. However, um, due to you know things that happen on the internet and stories we hear it's just it's one of those things where we just can't keep our mouth shuts um you know for those who don't know and those who don't have tiktok or in the past uh week right yeah it's about to be i think eight days eight or nine days now i think it's nine yeah something like that Mm -hmm. um There has been a story that you and I have been wholeheartedly invested. Like, I've never been invested in the story. Usually, we're just like, oh, okay, whatever. You know, who cares? However, um, sorry, I just dropped my pen. Um, However, I just, it was like jaw dropping, you know, every day was something new, something new, something new. And it was just like, whoa. So for those who don't know what I'm talking about, over in the land of TikTok, okay, (laughs) pun intended, Uh, (laughs) So (laughs) there is a story of two influencers and they have huge platforms, huge following, Um, you know, one had 3.5 million, which is Modern Warrior, aka Lance or Lance, aka Martin Warrior, and then you had some girl, Chelsea. Now, I didn't know who Chelsea was until the story happened, right? Same, same. Yeah, I, I only followed uh, Modern Warrior because um, on his platform, for ho- those who don't know, because I do have friends and uh, family members, they, they don't follow TikTok, so they wouldn't know. Um, so apparently, you know, he has a platform <clears throat> where he comes in and he's like, hey, colonizer, and, you know, uh, does that whole spiel and uh, now you had a girl but I don't know much about her platform but uh, a lot of my mutuals and my friends you know offline like they follow this chick and I was like huh interesting because you know when you go into the follow like you'll see people who follows them or like people you follow follow them so I saw that I would call her a feminist activist oh okay okay that's That's kind of what I want to put her in that box because I'm not gonna lie I did look on her page and mm-hmm. I saw several, cause you know, when you have the, most people nowadays have a link tree. So uh, when you click okay. it, there are actually a lot of organizations that she's like affiliated with Black Lives Matter. She's mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. like affiliate, of course with indigenous. And so yeah. like, there's mm-hmm. a lot like environmental. So. Oh, okay. See, I didn't know any of that. Yeah. So apparently um, Chelsea and Lance, just a quick summary and I won't get too far into it because this is not this is part of what's important and it's crazy okay so apparently Chelsea has been in some type of romantic relationship with uh Mono Warrior so one day Chelsea went on TikTok I guess I don't I don't so here's the thing um the timeline is kind of weird because uh it's either before or after she went to go see him and um she saw Chelsea saw Lance you know on a date with another girl like whoa (laughs) you know what I mean I'm pretty sure yeah yeah and I'm pretty sure (laughs) she got played through a TikTok video you gotta see the irony behind it though it for real and here's the thing right so during their back and forth conversation you know polygamy was was thrown out there so he was asking hey are you in polygamy like Lance was asking that to Chelsea and she's like uh no so that got turned down but uh I guess Chelsea didn't get the hint that you know he didn't want a serious relationship within continuous conversations right so she became what I call delusional so you start having this, you no, know, it's true. Every woman goes through it, right? Like yeah. you start talking to a guy, listen, I'm going to just keep it real. Whenever you go on a Tinder date, hinge date, whatever it is, an online date, you meet someone online, right? You talk to them. And the thing is, these guys have a way of telling us things we want to hear, using that 
so they can get into our pants, right? Yeah. That's pretty much what Lance did to Chelsea. And it's, it's understandable because you can get hurt. Nobody wants to be played. Nobody wants to feel betrayed. You know what I mean? And so what did Chelsea do? Because she was hurt, she used her emotions. She went online and she, quote unquote, exposes lands for being um, a dog, pretty much. Yeah. Right? Yeah. But the problem lies here. Okay. Because I get it. You know, you're hurt. You, you want to get back at um, the man who hurt you. Right. It's, it, you know, in this case, this is not okay because of the way she did it. To come out and to tell the world your business, but in a way that is so harmful. She played with audiences' emotions, mm -hmm. AKA white woman tear. And she played with our heartstrings and we fell for it. And we felt, you know, we, we feel for her, right? Because he was a dog in the beginning. She portrayed him as a dog, but what didn't sit right with many people is that she approached the situation as essay. Mm -hmm. And um, <clears throat> I can't say the full word because I don't want TikTok to demonetize us, whatever, censor us. And um, some of these- Especially are, YouTube, because we got to be careful. The kind yeah, of yeah, because anything can demonetize us. So yeah, she played it off as a essay victim. And that was not the case. So mm -hmm. she did the story that he cheated and, you know, he, I guess. Um, Took advantage of her. Yeah. Basically was texting her sweet things. Allegedly told her like to wear lingerie. She flew out to go see him. And she basically confirmed that she had told him about his trauma and he said that he would protect her. He bas she basically like posted, you know, yeah, she practices. yeah. And then as audience, you know, as the story developed, audience started realizing that wait a minute, her stories aren't adding up. Like what she was saying is not what we were seeing. So now we have a problem. Claimed, yeah, mm -hmm. um, she also claimed that she was possibly pregnant because she slept with him unprotected. Also, yes. And mm -hmm. the problem with that as well is that she played this moment off as a miscarriage when she actually had an abortion. So no. it took one white woman's tear to anger multiple communities, multiple people of different, you know. Ethnicities. Yeah, but it's not just that. You hurt people who were essay survivors of victims um you hurt people who has actually lost child in 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 miscarriages or even after like uh childbirth you know uh women do have you know uh, baby like stillborn babies now i do apologize let me pause here before we continue the story i want to say this We'll be talking about deep stuff that might be triggering for people. I do apologize for putting up this warning after me saying all this. So I just want to say, if this is going to be too much for you, please do not proceed. If you are okay with listening, uh, because we're going to be covering things from how white women tears has hurt everybody in the community. There's a thing I've been saying, white women tears are kryptonite to POCs it is so um i just want to take this moment if this is going to be too much once again please um hop off if not um thank you for sticking around let's have a conversation because this is serious and remember at the end of the day you saw our picture and you click play <laughs> just putting it out there you click to play yeah. nobody forced you to and I think um, after this situation, there's other stories we want to bring up. I think it's very important that we have this conversation because it is very harmful, damaging to our communities because they don't understand consequences. So, okay, let's begin. All right, Chelsea, what the hell? You know what I mean? I get it. If she would have um, 
treated Lance as a regular Tinder date, this would have been okay. However, she is a delusional woman. Yes, I've said mm -hmm. it. Why? Because she fantasized, she romanticized how their relationship was going to be. And when it didn't turn out to be that way, guess what happened? She went ahead and she brought all of our attention. She literally led a witch hunt to him. What I did not know is that prior to her, you know, bringing the story um, into TikTok, um, Lance was already uh, having a target on his back. So he's a Native American um, TikToker. Um, I should mention that. And the thing is, he already had like white supremacists finding any excuse to, to get him, right? Because- And neo-Nazis. You know, yes, uh -huh, because of the things he was posting on, on, you know, on his TikTok, he built a platform, you know, saying, hey, colonizers are, you know, putting out like information that you know, it was pretty much awareness and he ruffled a lot of feathers bad people, you know? And yeah. so he had to like get money. He had to move. Anyways, I digress. So the thing is when this all happened, Chelsea knew all this and she put this man in danger again mm -hmm. because you portrayed him as someone who was doing essay. Now, as the story was developing, other people who should have been minding their own business, but they didn't, who had a huge platform, use this moment for clout. And, you know, Kat, I'm really glad we minded our business. We didn't post you, anything on, on TikTok. You remember? Um, oh, oh, well, yeah, the, we'll get to that in a second. We'll get to okay. that in a second. Uh, we, there's something we wanted to address. However, um, let me get this big chunk out of the way. So, okay, moving forward. So, you know, um, you were being problematic in this situation because uh, now you have him back on the radar, but then, uh, as you know, you kept spewing out lies and you were calling him a manipulator and all this stuff. Turns out you were being manipulating us, but you were manipulating our emotions. Right. And that is just as bad. And when we didn't believe your story, you know, what did you do? You got on the internet and the people who were defending you went as far, went as far to bullying other indigenous women. You just saying, remember, you gotta remember, she is a white woman. She saying to the her audience, um, hey, uh, just so you know, don't send hate, don't send attack. Girl, girl. You think that's going to stop someone? Absolutely not. You knew exactly what you were doing when you were putting out the story. All because mm -hmm. you were hurt. And the thing is, when people started putting out their opinion, specifically Indigenous women and Black women, or Black people uh, in general too, because it was um, also males uh, speaking about this, you started going into TikTok, taking down videos, deleting videos because it didn't fit into your narrative. So when things started fitting into your narrative, it started, you know, your lies, your narrative started to crumble. You literally built a sandcastle that was slowly crumbling because we didn't believe your lie. So what do you do? You get on, uh, I think it was IG and she started like crying and, you know, like something about the left wing doesn't matter. But the thing is at this point, girl, we you can't know believe she's on the story. left, which is ironic. For real? <laughs> she's coming, yeah, she's coming from the left and she's on the left. I'm just like, <laughs> that's like coming from your family. I just find that ironic. This I'm whole like, thing is the left and the right are attacking her but she, she you know what it is what it is yeah this it's, isn't even oh, trying man. to be political so and you know it's funny because i bring up the the whole thing about like her taking down videos that wasn't fitting the narrative because cat just recently you actually duetted a video and yes. yeah you you did your own story and uh mm -hmm. want to tell us about that Yes, you do. Because in the beginning, I did make a video defending her. And it's actually five parts. 
I don't know. I'm never going to bring Thank God you didn't you post know. it though. You see, you see, that's the exact reason like geek listeners, I actually said I should wait before I post it yep. because we're in the moment right now. And I'm so glad because I would have ended up like Auntie Karen's dumbass. Yes. You know why? Because of <laughs> we lost you, know, you a little I bit. Hold on. We lost listen. you. You broke up. Oh, can you hear me? Yeah, now I can. Okay. So, yeah, I would have ended up like Auntie Karen had I had posted my five videos, which I'm glad I waited. You want to know why? Because I stayed in the department of other people's business. I just hung out there. I didn't yes. actually like, yes. cash my stuff in. And you know, after seeing what happened the next 24 hours, I was naturally upset. And there were a lot of people that took their videos down supporting her. Like there's the influencer mm-hmm. named the Voodoo Bay. And it's sad because Chelsea thanked her and took her video to support her. Because of course, the Voodoo Bay is African-American for those who don't know. And she talks about, you know, Black issues. And she had talked about how the trauma, and I have to put this in quotation marks with Chelsea related to the black community which I didn't you know agree with what she said she took that video down herself when she realized what Chelsea was doing I made a stitch Bye. video on let's geek pod and if you guys want to see the video I actually reposted it on my personal TikTok because I didn't want it to affect our main page and it got removed within less than two hours with that one government for harassment and bullying no, no, no. The one that I posted oh, the original. on TikTok. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the original video got taken. I stitched it and it got mm-hmm. taken down within two hours for harassment and bullying. And right. I was just like, wait, are we for real right now? Meaning that homegirl is really going through her hashtags and just pressing report on anything. And I haven't been this sh- like shook and impressed since it came to shelving. <laughs> this is serious. <laughs> Those of you who've listened to that episode, you know. But yeah. I reposted it on my original. I really was pissed. I'm sorry, I, I was I wasn't it. expecting your K Michelle <laughs> comment. <laughs> like that it's it's crazy. One of the things that I did mention in both videos, the one mm-hmm. supporting her and the one of me clapping back saying this is so ridiculous at this point, is I had mentioned how harmful these kind of accusations were. And the Mm -hmm. way she was reacting, it's like, it's normal that you're going through trauma. It's normal that you're Mm -hmm. upset, but you're taking it to 12 when I feel like you should be at seven. If that Mm -hmm. makes sense. Absolutely. Like, I I don't know what to say. Like, do we want to talk about him until at this moment or do we want to wait before we bring that in? No, I think so. It's a good moment okay. because um, honestly, with Chelsea, it's just the the just is that if she would have treated this as a Tinder date, like most women do, mm-hmm. you know, you meet a guy online, he he does like, listen, I, I, have you ever dated online before? Mm-hmm. Yeah, so have I. I. I've tried it out. Yeah. And, you know, there, there are actually guys that I went on a date and it was an actual date, but, you know, no connection. Um, there was even, um, guys that told me a lot of BS and I was just like, whoa, you know, the delusion and I see it. Oh, we've all been played as women. Yeah, we've all been played and vice versa, by the way, vice versa, because yeah. not just women, um, falling victim into this, uh, there are men too, who, you know, they're hoping that they're in a relationship and it would pan out. But, uh, the moment they start opening up they're closing immediately. Why? Because women played with a string too. So anyways, um, getting to the point, uh, you know, if she would have treated this as just a regular day, like, damn, he got into my pants. Nope. She had to let everybody know, but how she did it was, was really dangerous. Oh, and then did you know that this went international headlines? We'll get into that in just a moment. Yeah, we'll get into that in just a moment, but I think it's very important why we're bringing up Emmett Till at this very moment. Yeah, because like we had stated earlier, there are some neo-Nazis and white supremacists Mm -hmm. that actually have attacked. We didn't mention that he's moved. It's gotten so bad that Lance had to leave the internet, rightfully so, because Mm -hmm. it was getting too extreme. He was getting death threats. There were rumors being put out on him that Chelsea even did have to defend, like apparently... 
he had been in a relationship with a 16 year old girl, which was a hundred percent not true mm-hmm. at all. Mm-hmm. And I'm glad she actually like debunked that. But and then you I'm, had Auntie Karen calling him a uh, sex offender. Yeah, allegedly with no evidence. Yeah, allegedly with no evidence whatsoever. Yeah, crazy. But, Mm -hmm. So with Emmett Till, those who do not know his story, especially those who live outside of the U.S. who listen to us, thank you again. Emmett Till was a a 14-year-old African-American boy, this was, I believe, in the late 50s, who was murdered by two white men and, Mm -hmm. you know, brother and Mm brother-in-law. He had gone into, like, his local grocery store with his friends and he was only there for the summer to see you know his cousin right and he had seen a white woman and he was there like oh you should say hello baby and stuff so he whistled at her and said bye baby and then walked out that's it that's all he did basically cat called her for two seconds and caroline bryant and forgive me before i finish this story who is going to have a special seat in hell next to the devil I'm sorry, I have to say this. Mm -hmm. She basically went home, told her husband about it, over-exaggerated the story, and said that he harassed her and was disrespectful to her and made her feel uncomfortable. Like, she just over-exaggerated the story so bad that he and his brother-in-law went to his house, was able to find him. They broke into his house, grabbed that 14-year-old boy, beat his ass to a pulp, Mm. mutilated him, lynched him. And then when they were done, they threw him into the river. A Mm. 14 year old child. This is a seventh grader. This is somebody who's in primary seven. And right after that, of course, they found him underwater. And we're not going to post it, of course, for our episode on YouTube. But when you have the time, people Google Google Emmett Till and you will see the mutilation of his face. The only way his mother was able to recognize him was by the ring that he was wearing. Yes. So, of course, they had the funeral. It was national news. Mm -hmm. It was basically the 50s generation of Trayvon Martin basically that was the Trayvon Martin of the 50s and Miss Bryan is a mother SNG because the day that funeral happened they were advising her for it to be a closed casket because of how mutilated and bad his body was and he said and she said no we are not closing this and I want to and I want the world to know what they did to my baby. That was her exact words. I want the world to know yeah. what she did to my baby. Mm-hmm. And that was one of those things where we as a country were just like, yo, we have to do better than this. Mm-hmm. They arrested the brother and um, the husband. They were in court. I don't even think the court case even lasted long. And of course, an all white jury voted not guilty on all counts and both of them got to go home you should see the clip when like i say y'all when y'all have time go on youtube look at these clips you see them smiling they're hugging each other like they just left the movie theaters and they went about their business and what was funny is that a few months later the brother and the husband did an interview for i forget what magazine where they just crack jokes about how they killed him. They can do that, Yasmin. I know. It's just, it's just no double double jeopardy. You can't bring <sighs> something back. It's like when OJ wrote, if I did it, just clowning the situation. And we already knew what we already knew about the story. Caroline Bryant did admit years later, I think like in the 80s, like, yeah, I lied about it. He never really did any of that to me. It's the fact that they don't have empathy or remorse or nothing. And, you know, when I hear stuff like that, it triggers me. It's specifically, you know, you're scrolling on TikTok or you're scrolling through Instagram, Twitter, whatever it is, and you see a white woman, male, whatever, and you see them say, uh, especially especially now, I'll, I'll give a direct example. I'm scrolling through TikTok during this whole Chelsea debacle 
and people are clowning her audio. You know, there's an audio going around. <laughs> sorry. I'm sorry. I, audio I know, I know, I know. Some, some. Can I do it? Can I imitate it? Go please? ahead, go ahead, go ahead. You knew. You fucking knew. <laughs> you fucking knew. Anyways, they were mocking this audio. And there are white people saying, you know, times like this, there's no empathy. And this is coming from we say Black Lives Matter. Oh, I'm not gonna say it, but you'll wear a shirt that says cat lives matter, it's dog true. lives matter, but that's insens- That's not insensitive. Okay. It's just like, listen, we're not clowning her pain. And I think that's where they're getting it confused. Mm-hmm. A woman lied. She twisted a narrative, okay? On a man's her- color. Yes, because her feelings were hurt because the feelings weren't reciprocated. She didn't get the clues. And you want us to have sympathy when she cried and literally led a witch hunt to this man. And not only to this man, you guys dragged another indigenous woman in because you guys asked her for her opinion. You did not like her opinion when this moment happened and you guys took down her TikTok Mm -hmm. and you still want us to give Chelsea some empathy. Doesn't matter whether Chelsea defended her. It happened Mm -hmm. because of you. And you want to know what's funny? Talking about pity, just finishing up with Caroline, um, Carolyn Bryant, Mm -hmm. who is still alive and well. Dave Chappelle did do a stand up saying that the woman died on her deathbed. She's not dead at all. She's still alive, well and kicking. I think she should be in her late 80s now or no, 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 her 90s, like maybe late 80s, early 90s. Mm -hmm. Around, I don't know what year, I think 2000 and something, her son died. And there's one person who knows where she is, but swears they'll never reveal it for her own safety. She said that after her own son died, her first son, she finally got what Miss Bryant felt. And that's the time she actually felt guilty for what happened to that boy. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's crazy. Anyone want to know what's crazy? Mm Mm-hmm. There's a um, a common picture of her currently to see where what she looks like. This was, I think this picture came seven years ago or something like that of her at a cookout with her family laughing, grilling and stuff. She was comfortable enough to get a Facebook. That's where she effed up. Once those photos went out, they immediately took her Facebook down, wiped it off. Mm. Can you imagine feeling that comfortable to do something like that? And mm. then to tell this per- this journalist that swears to never reveal her location that, yeah, I lied about it. I didn't understand what the issue was until my own son died. So I kind of do feel bad about it. But yeah, Bill Cosby went to jail for essaying women, rightfully so, even though it upsets me that he's out. He's about the same age as Carolyn Bryant. My question is, why is she not in jail? Why is her ass not rotting in prison right now? And for those who want to pull the, who want to be insensitive and say, oh, well, not saying it's right. This was years and years ago. Let me tell you how accurate this is. Yasmin, do you know that Emmett Till is the same exact age if he was alive today as Morgan Freeman? Yeah. Oh. Morgan Freeman is the same age as Emmett Till. If Emmett Till was alive today, he would be Morgan Freeman's exact age. So let's not talk about, oh, that was so many years ago. That Mm. could even been Morgan Freeman back in those days. Yeah. And they did it to teach a lesson. You know, a lot of people may get upset with this and it's not to offend, but I have to say this. I've heard this saying from people over the years that, oh, the most dangerous person in America is a white man. I've always debunked that and I've always disagreed. I've always said the most dangerous person in America is the American white woman. Actually, you know, the white woman in general. Yes, um, because uh, you're not the first to say that. Um, that there's 
other people who have said that as well. Um, it's historically though. Yeah. Historically, a white woman got Emmett Till killed. A single white woman destroyed Tulsa. So I guess I have to tell the story of Tulsa, Oklahoma. Those of you also who do not know, especially outside the US listening to us, Tulsa, Oklahoma was a good big city for African-Americans. It was one of the most developed cities. The nickname of it was the Black Wall Street. They had their own stock. They had hospitals. They had mm -hmm. diners, restaurants, barber shops. Mm -hmm. Most people were doctors, scientists, like, it built the market, and this was the 1920s, and this town had been around since the late 1800s. Yep. A man named, um, I believe, I hope this is not um, wrong. I'll just say Roland because I remember his last name. Mm -hmm. Mr. Roland, he was 19 years old. He had gone into an elevator, and there was a woman named Sarah Page, 17 years old white woman she was the elevator operator mm -hmm. he walked in and he had tripped had fallen on top of her because he tripped she screamed in the you know confusion somebody falls on you you scream so he gets up like you know i'm sorry walks out a white conductor saw it assumed she was essayed and basically told police like this boy just essay that white woman do something about it and a few of um, the local KKK and a few of the white male citizens from the neighboring town went to Tulsa to go get him so that they could lynch him. And what ended up happening, the black male citizens over there said, oh, no, 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 we're not doing this here. They weaponed up. If you want to come get this black child, you're going to have to go through us. And they said, oh, really? Bet. We coming back. They went, got their weapons. And city officials even helped them get these weapons. Yeah. They came over. It was basically a standoff. What's up? You going to give them to us? You can take this dude off our prying hands. And next thing you know, people were shooting. Next thing you know, more townspeople came. This whole entire dispute lasted two days. 45 children died. 800 people were injured. 100 and something people were killed mm. in this including white people were in that number. And the city of Tulsa was destroyed. And the funniest thing about it is Sarah Page never even confirmed that that happened. I believe that she had debunked that, like he never touched me or anything. It but was she just stayed the, silent in the moment. Boom, yeah. that's exactly what it was. She stayed silent in that moment. And the craziest thing about it, Yasmin, nobody knows whatever happened to Sarah Page. And nobody knows what happened to Mr. Roland after that. There's rumor that he had left town for his own safety mm -hmm. right after the whole Tulsa destruction. Nobody knows what happened to Sarah Page. Maybe she went incognito like Caroline Bryant because mm. they know people don't forget and they're still looking yeah. for these people. Yeah. And the city of mm -hmm. Tulsa was never repaired. They don't give a F about a black city that was destroyed. And they say that Tulsa was the worst racial relation act mm -hmm. in the United States. This was 1921. And last year was 100 years since that happened. And come this year will be 101 years since what happened to Tulsa. The Black Wall Street. Mm. Gone. And, you know, I don't, I don't even know. I just find it sad. And to our listeners who are white women, please understand, like we said earlier, we are not talking to you. If you feel offended, then we possibly are talking to you. If you feel offended by this, because we need you to see the point that we are making right now. Instead of you get offended, you should be sitting here asking yourself, damn, it was that serious that a whole entire town got destroyed? Oh my God, a white woman lying on a seventh grader got him killed and mutilated and tortured and lynched and thrown into the river like trash. You gotta ask yourself these things. It is not your fault 
for those who are listening, but learn from history. Instead of you use those white tears to destroy somebody, man up and use your privilege to help us. It doesn't just have to be black people, like all, help all of us. Mm -hmm. You guys have such a power. You think you don't, but you really have a power that I personally, as a black woman, doesn't have. If I had gone on the internet and I was Chelsea right now as a black woman, y'all wouldn't even give me the time of day. I would even think I'd go viral, no. to be honest. Mm -mm. I really don't think I'd even go viral for it. No, no. No, nope. right. And just in case anybody's like, oh, again, you're looking at the perspective of like, oh, but you know, that's just like history, blah, blah, blah. All right, it's let's take cool. something. Yeah. Besides Chelsea, let's take something that happened recently. Um, mm -hmm. how long, uh, you Maybe you can tell me how long ago this was. The episode of Big Brother. Okay. And I feel terrible. I do not remember their names. Yeah, I, um, I we'll post article. However, we will post article on yeah. YouTube. So everything we say, we will provide information for you guys, as always, and it'll be in the description box. This is one of those special ones. I believe it was like one of those celebrity big brothers. If you're mm -hmm. living outside the US and the UK, you probably may know what I'm talking about. I believe she's an actress. She was in one of the rooms with one of the guys and he was play fighting you know, taking his fist, play fighting, putting it all, like all in her face. And she's just like, stop, stop, like stop playing. And he goes, what? And he puts his hand in her face again, just to joke, like he's about to hit her. And she goes, stop. And he's like, okay. And he's laughing and he goes about his business. She goes to the next room and she's crying. And one of the castmates is just like, what's wrong? And she goes, he hit me. And he was like, what? Oh, the guy over there, apologies guys, like I said, I don't remember saying, he hit me and they're like, what do you mean he hit you? Like he got in my face and I told him not to get in my face and then he put his hands on me and hit me. And they're just like, wait, are you serious right now? And she goes, yeah, I'm scared to be around him and such. And the castmates are like, wait, what? Another castmate said the same thing, what's going on? He hit her, they confront him. And he's just like, wait, what? And they're just like, you put your hands on her. Why would you do that to her? She's a woman. And he goes, I never put my hands on her. And she was crying and everything. And for the record, this gentleman's white too. So these are both, um, she's white, he's white. And he's getting so upset. Like, I did not put my hands on her. I would never put my hands on a woman. I would never do this. And it became such a big thing. This storyline, I think, happened for about two days. It was so bad that, you know, the people who vote on Big Brother were calling in on the show saying to stop this right now because the show was doing this for ratings. And I absolutely agree. The audience watching were the ones that were just like, yo, chill on this, like, stop it. Mm -hmm. So they had to, you know, pause everything, go inside remove both parties because the man was even crying about it. He was yeah. traumatized. He was so traumatized about it. And they had to explain like, you know, we got to roll the camera and they showed the scene for all of them to see. He never put his hands on her at all. He was just playing with her. And then she had the audacity to backtrack and be like, oh, I'm so sorry. You know, I thought you had put your hands on me. It was a misunderstanding, but you were so sure that this man did it. Yeah. You lied. Mm -hmm. Your tears literally turn the whole household against this guy and if this guy doesn't even want to be around women or so i would not even blame him same same it's traumatizing it is mm -hmm. right and and that's what people don't understand it's just like it, these white women tears can affect all different communities and and, and people you know on the topic of of this just recently, there was a story. I wish I could remember, but this this literally like like made news. I know 2020 is about to make a story about it, but um, there is a woman from Southern California, I believe, and um, she went missing on a hike or something like that. Uh, mm -hmm. Is that correct? Yeah. She went. She went on a hike or something like that. 
this was like 2016, but it's being brought back. I think she got sentenced or something now. Okay, I got the story right here. All right. So uh, a woman in Northern California, and her name is Sherry Pen- Papini? Papini or something like that. Um, she is currently arrested because uh, back in 2016, she faked um, her kidnapping because she wanted to you know, have this rendezvous with her ex-boyfriend. On Thursday, uh, she has charges on lying to federal agents about being kidnapped and defrauding the f- state's victim compensation board of $30,000. So pretty much this woman, uh, when she went on a hike, um, you know, she she went missing and the family started putting out a missing persons report and um eventually she showed up and the thing is when they found her I think she was like it was about 150 miles away from where uh her hike was originally was she flagged down a car they saw her you know her body was covered in bruises and um when she got taken in she decided to come up with this story where she said that she was kidnapped and uh, I guess she was in somebody's like basement, whatever it is. The point is, um, she blamed two Latina women for what happened to her. And so they went ahead and did a case. Now, uh, her husband or boyfriend, um, sorry, I can't remember uh, currently, but her partner literally went on TV and was saying, this poor man, he was like crying, was like, I can't imagine in the state that my, my partner was in, you know, her being in that basement locked up and, and screaming for my name. Um, <laughs> I'm just like- screaming another man's name. Yes, <laughs> and I was just like, <laughs> what? So here's the thing though. Here's why I'm upset. You literally wanted a rendezvous with your ex-boyfriend and you lied on my community. Guess what you did when that story happened? You sent hate because there was no face at the time. She she gave a very generic description and all that stuff. You essentially led people to start harassing Latina women in California. Mm -hmm. Like white women don't understand that they have this power that they can turn on and off. And can literally send a group of people to go and attack an indigenous person, a black person, a Latino person, who knows, they could attack like uh, Indian people, Arab people, Asian people. If they feel like, you know what, I got the time today. Make up a story, lie on a person's name, specifically a person of color. And can lead a witch hunt. Mm -hmm. That is the most dangerous thing they can do to us and in society. People of color specifically. And, and you know what? We might as well add white men to that because of what happened in, in Big Brother. Yeah. Like, it's, it's the part, like, the author of The Lovely Bones. Mm-hmm. If oh, which I, seen... I found that out recently because you told me about it. Yes. So I've, I'm not going to lie. Like, is, like we said, we're going to post all these articles for you guys to read. And like we said earlier, this episode was not planned. We decided to do this last minute. The person that wrote um, the book, The Lovely Bones, which was made into a movie, just had her, the person that essayed her, exonerated. Yeah, he was um, exonerated because he didn't do it. Back in 1982, when Mm -hmm. she was in college, she was RA'd by a Black man who they never found. For all we know, that Black man is probably still alive today going about his business. And a few months later, or I think like a few weeks later afterwards, you know, she's traumatized by the experience. She's walking by campus. She sees a Black man. And the black man sees her, just says, hey, do you need some help? Literally, that's what happened. Just mm. said, hey, do you need some help? Because she looks scared. 
And she claimed that he was the one that RA'd her. She called the cops. They arrested him. They put him in a lineup with people. She identified him. There was no evidence at all that he had touched her. They claimed, Yasmin, that they had a sample and they put him in jail. He's been in jail since 1986, y'all. He's been in jail since before I was born. Literally, four years before I was born is when this man was in jail. And he just got out of jail, I believe this year or last year it was. Mm-hmm. Was it like earlier, like January? Yeah, it was something? yeah, it was something like that. Yeah. Yeah, that's basically almost 40 years. Almost. I, I think because- this, sorry, the saddest part about this whole situation, anytime mm-hmm. I hear the story, is that every single woman do not have remorse. No, they don't. They don't. Because when they sit there in court, and we even talked about this last episode with mm-hmm. um um Dante White. Um sorry, Dante Wright. Yeah, Dante yep. Wright, where like they'll they'll start use it again they'll turn on those white women tears and start Mm -hmm. crying but they're not crying because they have empathy sympathy whatever you want to call it they're crying because they're going to jail they got caught they're scared now she was smiling in her mug shot how are you smiling in your mug shot and then you crying in court saying you're sorry why are you smiling in your mug shot knowing you killed somebody you're not sorry so there needs to be some type of punishment when people lie like this, like what, like I don't know why they sit there and think this was just what. To me, They're it's like there's you. You're not human. <laughs> you're not human at that point. Yes, and there are real victims of this out there. And excuse, I'm gonna say it, bitches like these people, not just white women even because that's the topic of it. Bitches like the women in general that lie about this shit are the reason why real victims do not get believed. Personally, I believe that the sentence for RAing somebody should be the exact same um, amount as a person who lied. I think if you lie about something like that, you should spend at least minimum for five years in prison. That's mm. my own opinion. Minimum yeah. five years with, depending on how bad it is, maybe a maximum of 15. Mm. That's just my own personal, five to 15 years. No, That's just my own personal opinion. Because that doesn't go, that goes so unchecked. Sitting here and just saying, oops, my bad, misunderstanding. You ruined somebody's life. And you're talking about that's a misunderstanding. And they can't even get it back. They can't. They can't. The lovely bone salt. Oh, I'm so sorry. You're a victim of the system. And I help contribute to. What are you going to do? You won't give him some of that publishing money? What are you going to do for this man to make his life better? You took his life away. He sat in a prison for almost 40 years, crying his eyes out. Because a person like you saw him on the street and lied on him. Y'all don't know the dangerous thing. There's the other case that happened in 1994. Susan Smith, some of y'all in America might know this, the ones outside. She's a white woman who um, was having an affair with a man who did not want kids. She had a um, a two-year-old and she had a three-year-old son, Yasmin. They're our age. If they were alive today, they would be 33 and they would be 32 years old today. Damn. She basically took her car with both children inside alive, pushed her car into the river. Oh, I remember the story. Yes, 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 I remember the story. They, they debunked that within a week. To be honest, they had a feeling she was lying, but they had to double check. Of course, they debunked yeah. it within a week. She said a black man kid, like robbed, um, carjacked her, took the car and drove off with the kids and kidnapped them. Can you imagine what they did? My mama told me back then, she said, I'm telling you now, they said when that happened, the first few days, they were tearing up that city, harassing all the black men, of course. Of course, the white women lied. It was believed so fast. 
If I had said the same thing opposite, are you sure? I don't know. Would they even take it that serious? No. Is that going to be national news if my babies went missing? Are they going to pull a Gabby Petito on me? No. <sighs> There's something I want to add because you, you had mentioned that, you know, I think about what Chelsea did and, and, you know, when you come forward and you get on the internet and telling people your business. I remember originally the reason why people go on the media is because there was actual injustice involved. When somebody don't want to take your case, what do you do? You had nowhere to go. Go to the newspaper, go to the media, you know, mm -hmm. let them know, hey, this happened to me. I was wronged and I need your help. Like that's when you get the public opinion. That's what it's actually meant for. Not because your feelings were hurt and so you're going to go ahead and create this false narrative. It's ridiculous. And not only that, you also hurt women, um, trigger warning, you also hurt women who has actually lost children, who actually had to bury them. And you're talking about you're suffering this ache and this pain. That you I know? never... You will never. And the understand. thing is, the thing is, before somebody says, oh, that's so insensitive. No, no, no. Let me tell you something. Okay. You can't compare someone who has lost a child, miscarriage, stillbirth to someone who made a choice. Again, here, uh, uh, you know, uh, I always get it confused. We're, we're pro choice, or at least I am. I can't speak for you. No, I am. I'm pro-choice. Okay. So we're pro-choice. It's not my here. business. Yeah. It's yeah. not my business. No. And you, you know what? You do what you got to do. You know, you did a choice for your body. However, you can't go online describing this pain that you're having when you made a choice compared to someone who didn't. That's not right. It's the fuckery behind it. And you, you know, I had called you when I saw that video, because a lot of people were talking about it on TikTok. I had called you, Kat, and I was so triggered. I was yep. honestly going to make a video myself. However, I stopped. Again, it's none of my business. I don't want to be caught up in the crossfire. And I'm glad I didn't. I'm glad I didn't. I kept it to myself. However, here, I'm just going to let you guys know that literally triggered me. That's so upsetting. And this is why... You know, when you look at S-A-R and then, um, you know, abortion, all you're doing is fueling the people who opposes all this, the people who don't believe us, the people who literally, you gaslight people and then we're not believed. There's no sympathy. They don't care. <sighs> yeah. And then you have the audacity to sit there and say, it was in it was uninformed consent, which I never even heard of this term until a week ago. I ain't allegedly, about it. I I, I want to say this allegedly. Um, there's not a thing according to this uh, lawyer. Uh, a lot of oh, um, a lot of lawyer uh, chimed in in the conversation. Uh, because a lot of people that, you know, people who don't have certifications, nothing like that, you know, they want to put their two cents. Listen, we're all allowed with uh, our public opinion. We live in America where free speech is, is a thing for us. But however, a lot of people use it very dangerously. And from my understanding, allegedly, allegedly, Lance is lawyering up. So rightfully so. And then you got that other chick who's also a white woman, Banana Marie. To be honest, I don't even know like why she even spoke and put her two cents in it because she basically joined Chelsea randomly and said, I too am a victim. <laughs> Literally talking about, yeah, I flew out and I saw him too. So he played me also and it just really hurts. But at the same time, girl, you married. So how are you mad at him? Allegedly. Probably, yeah, she's allegedly married. So We're going to be throwing this word at like yeah. left and right. So we do apologize because 
here's the thing. One, we ain't trying to be caught in the crossfire. We're just reporting what we know. And then also we're just saying like what it is and how upsetting and also how dangerous things that these women are saying are. Mm -hmm. But on top of that, it's just, there's just so many, he said, she said, he said, she said, it's just what like the the catastrophe of what happened in tiktok this past week is ridiculous and the story is still unfolding as we speak like how are you gonna like call him out for playing you but you got a little wife you allegedly got a little wife or a little girlfriend and you're dumb to keep it on your ig page like nobody would look down and see it like you fucking knew (laughs) I'm I'm sorry. This is serious, but like, yeah, it's funny. Oh my God. TikTok is like, the internet is like wild, ruthless. (laughs) They literally took her sound, remixed it. Did you know it's a beat? There's an acoustic version. (laughs) Like, I don't mean to laugh, but there's an acoustic. The crazy part is that. She's literally, Chelsea is upset because we turned on her. <laughs> Can you we imagine? Because you lied. Like, girl, you lied. I've called him. He told me to send him lingerie. No, you posted the text messages. You showed him lingerie. He, he didn't never ask even asked for, for you. It. He didn't even ask you. You just, you were thirsty as F. And then there's that video of you thirst trapping him yes. like last year. And it's just, and I agree with the comment section. Actually, this video did not age well. By the way, there's mm-hmm. multiple videos. Girl, First, there's multiple videos. Anyways, uh, we digress. We digress from the conversation. But, you know, it's at, at the end of the day, you know, oh, you got to understand this, this is, um, <sighs> nobody wants to take responsibility in these cases none of these white women wanted to take responsibility for their errors for their mistakes it's just a whoops uh, my bad the central park five let's bring that up for those also outside who don't know they were five boys between the ages of 15 to uh, i think 14 and a half this to is- 16 this is a story that happened in New York and they made a yeah. film about it, right? Mm-hmm. Yes. Um, when they see us, which you guys can watch it on Netflix, it's still on Netflix and it won an award. And I will say it's triggering. I have not watched that movie at all. I know the story. It's too triggering for me to watch. I, I don't want to watch that movie because I'm a Black person. I don't need to see what we already deal with. These boys are minding their own business, walking home from school, literally, a white woman was essayed by a stranger, beaten to a pulp, she passed out, she has no memory of what happened, not a single damn memory till this day of what happened to her. Police basically interrogated these five boys, brought them in and said, you essayed her. They said, no, we didn't, we're literally walking from school, nope. They put them in jail. They convinced this white woman that they did it. She confirmed it, even though she has no memory of what happened to her. And they put these boys in jail. These boys were in jail for almost 20 years since they were kids, never got married, never got to go to prom, none of that college, none of that. Their lives were stripped away. Families, you know, destroyed all relationships with families all destroyed now get this they got um, exonerated the real person that did it actually admitted it because he was already in jail for life for doing the same thing to somebody else and Mm -hmm. murdering apparently he was a serial killer he had killed at least three people Mm. and he was just like you know what i'm gonna be in jail for the rest of my life so i might as well admit it And he admitted that I'm the one that did it to the Central Park. The Central Park five kids, they're innocent. I'm the one that did it to her. They did the DNA, checked out. Oop, he's the one that did it. So they got him out of court. And they asked the woman, how do you feel? Do you think the police failed you? These are not her exact words. But when you clean up the conversation, she basically said, 
No, I really don't think the police did anything bad. They did what they had to do at the time. You know, I really don't know what happened to me. But to be honest, I'm not surprised that, you know, this guy is part of it because I truly don't believe it was just him. I think they just so happened to get his DNA. So she's basically saying like, yeah, they can be exonerated and all, but I still think those five people did it to me. Those five little boys did it to me. Even though I have no proof and I have no memory of it, I just think they did. Huh? Can you imagine what the Black community, yes, when the Black community was in a uproar two years ago when that happened. And I do not wish this on nobody. And uh-huh. forgive me because these are actual comments I saw on the internet. Some people were saying, that's the exact reason why you got essayed. And some people in my community were just like, we really wish he had killed you in that Oof. process. Oof. Yes, yes. That's what people actually said. I'm not saying it's right at all, but Yasmin- But they're angry. Understand. Yeah, no, I get it. The, you gotta understand, ang- yeah. yeah. It's anger. It's the injustice. Are you kidding me? Again, there's no remorse. At all. That's a Carolyn Bryant. But then and they want to tell us, they want to tell us that we have to have some empathy because we're clowning an audio. Where is the empathy for these little boys? Where is the empathy for Emmett Till? Like, where's the empathy for these people? Emmett Till has, like, once again, if you live outside the U.S., look up Emmett Till's story. Even his memorials honoring him have been shot up by KKK members or shot up by white supremacists and neo-Nazis. It has literally been filmed. Go on YouTube and check all of this out. His plaque is now bulletproof. Because so many racists have shot at it to prove a point. They look at that as a monument. Hmm. That's what the KKK, they look at that as a reward. I saw one video, which maybe I can find it. Maybe I can. It was on the news. This was years ago. And they were part of the KKK. They were some kind of KKK tribe. They went over there and they did it as an initiation. Yeah. Yeah. They shot it up as an initiation, but it's bulletproof now. They failed. It's bulletproof. And y'all out here want to talk about, oh, let's come together. Let's forget this. No, I don't want to um, teach critical race theory and not even to be political in this moment. This whole, um, this is my opinion. Yasmin, you're your own person. I'm speaking on my own, you know, opinion Mm -hmm. critical race theory should be taught it's still being taught right now actually no i agree with you no i agree with you completely talking about i don't want to learn about any of this it's harmful to learn about this how is it harmful to learn about slavery how is it harmful to know about all this so you think it's harmful to learn about slavery what happened to latin people coming to this country what happened to black people coming to this country the racism against asian people but you want to remember the holocaust you want to remember 9-11 You want to remember all these things, but you don't want to remember anything that happened to a minority in this country. And this is the number one comment that has pissed me the fuck off. And I'm not trying to get triggered at this moment. It's the fact that I've seen so many interviews where they have talked to people, white people, and they said, why don't you want critical race theory talk? Every single answer was, I don't want to feel guilty for being white. Why would you feel guilty for being white? Because you're learning about slavery. Tell me why you would feel guilty for being white. And if you listen to us and you support us or lose our support, write down why you feel guilty for learning about critical race theory. Why you feel guilty about being white. I don't feel guilty about being black. Let's talk about it. Mm. Like, Take that challenge. Like y'all don't understand how harmful it is. Take that challenge with that chick named Hannah Stocking. And I have the YouTube video. And when you scroll down on the comments on Apple or whatever you are to listening, you will see that video. She took that video down. For for those, yes, for for those who don't know what's going on. um, Okay, so uh, the woman she just mentioned. (laughs) Sorry. You were talking. Okay, you were talking so fast. Okay. So here's the thing. Uh, last year there was a tr- 
trend that they were doing on TikTok. And I know not a lot of people are on. Oh, this is not to cut you off. This is about four or five years ago. Yeah. Wait, what? I know. It's, uh, Wait, yeah, what? That, that, no, hold on. Yeah, that trend's about four or five years ago. Wait, are we talking about the same trend where it's like turn it off? And it's a yeah. white woman crying. No yep. way. No way. Yeah. Wait. I know. No. When I was no. looking up the video, I saw the dates on it. I was like, damn. No. I thought it was like two, three years ago. I thought it was yeah. last year. There is a trend on TikTok. TikTok ain't that old. Yeah, TikTok is that old. Whoa. I got my TikTok in 2015, Yasin. I started using it in 2020, finally. I know. Crazy, right? No, TikTok's same, same, been here same. for a minute. Yeah. Okay. Whoa. Mm -hmm. Okay. No, because I remember the thing got resurfaced again. So oh. yeah, that's why I thought it was last year. Okay. Okay. The point mm -hmm. is, the point is there was a trend on TikTok. And of course, every white woman jumped on it. Mm -hmm. Nobody else did because nope. we had common sense. Anywho. So uh, for those not familiar with TikTok, there's a lot of dances a uh, comedy sketch and trends that happen, you know, from makeup to gaming to whatever it is, okay? And most community hop on a trend to either get the clout or, you know, to express uh, their artistry. However, this one was not art. I don't know what the hell they were doing with this one. There was a trend. Uh, I don't know where the audio voice comes from, um, but if anybody knows, please let us know in the comment section over on YouTube, tw uh, tweet at us or whatever. But um, there's a voice that pretty much says, uh, there's a song that plays in the background and the voice says, turn it off. So that's the audio. Now, in this video, you have a bunch of white women crying. They're, they're crying on camera. And when they hear the cue, turn it off immediately they stop crying have a cynical smile some wink some thought it would be cute to smirk none of us found it funny at all not one of us oh that shit was scary man yeah but that like, proves that proves our point they they just proved our point whether this girl took it down it is on the internet forever and we will not forget mm -mm. they just showed the harm right there boom there you go just like that Yasmin, i went to theater school once again can i cry on cue yes i can but it takes me five to ten minutes to get myself in that like juju to even do that. Yeah, yeah. Not a lot of people have. have... They when you just say cry, boop, just like that, and then a few seconds later, just like what? That was but, a weird trend. Yeah. Like if you remember Christian Cooper, just naming another situation here in America. People would know him as the Black Bird Watcher. <laughs> I'm sorry, that's still me. Okay, I'll tell you. I do, okay, I don't know this one. You, you'll, you'll know once I explain okay. it. I'll tell you why I was laughing earlier about it. But okay. he was basically at Central Park, New York, the same park where the Central Park Five were accused. And he was just bird watching, minding his own Black business life. And this white woman came with her dog that didn't have a leash. All he said was, hey ma'am, park rules say that you gotta put a leash on the dog. That's all he said. And this woman started tripping, talking about, get away from me, get away from me. And she's just like, the hell? He takes out his phone and he's recording her for his own protection. And she's getting his face, he said, yo, can you back up? And she goes, back up away from me. And he's just like, back up. I just told you that you can't put, you know, you gotta put a leash on the dog. And then she goes, if you don't back up, I'm gonna call the police. And then he's like, what? She takes out her phone, Yasmin, and goes, I'm gonna call the police. And I'm gonna say that you attacked me. And he's like, what? what? She, Yasmin. I already got the article. Don't even worry, y'all. I got the article. And if the article doesn't have the clip, I will try to find my best to find the, uh, um, the actual, yeah, you the know, original clip. Yeah, the original interaction on YouTube. Don't worry, y'all gonna see all these receipts on this episode. Yeah. 
she was strangling the dog at the at the same time, taking out her phone, and she goes, "Hi, police! He's attacked. I'm being attacked by an African American man. I'm being attacked. Please, please, I'm scared." And he's just like, "What?" Recorded the whole thing, put it on the internet, of course, and people are upset. Like, of course, yeah. She got arrested, of course. Thank God. They, confis- they confiscated the dog. She does not have that dog back because of the way she was choking the dog in the process of trying to, you know, the dog was just like, you're suffocating the dog. So they took the dog away. She basically pulled the, listen, it was a misunderstanding. It wasn't, I just felt threatened. I was scared. I was blah, blah, blah. But you literally told him on camera, I'm going to call the police and just say you attacked me. She knew the power she had. It took a camera to protect himself. Can you imagine if you didn't have a camera? Mm. It could have been, he could have been the Central Park one. Not even trying to be funny. Yeah, and no, then, I get it. And then get this, right? The charges got dropped eventually. The charges got dropped late last year because she took an educational class and the black community was in a, a uproar. You wanna oh. know why? Oh, God. Because the bird watcher decided not to press charges. I was even angry about that because everybody said that you could have gotten killed True. with what she did. And you are trying to, and you're letting this BS slide. And he goes, I, you know, I just want to put it behind me. Apparently he's a, he's a um, cartoonist for comic books, ironically. And this is so ignorant, but yes, he, like, it's not funny, but it's funny. Cause that's, what, what? tell me, so what? he's gay. <laughs> And there's something wrong with Are you laughing gay. because he was gay? No, it's the comment section. Please forgive oh, me, y'all. I don't the comment section. be insensitive. Okay. But people in the comments are just like, you're not pressing charges with your gay bird watching black ass. Like, <laughs> who the fuck, what kind no. of black person goes bird watching? And I was sitting there, people were arguing like, oh, so because he's black, he can't go bird watching. And I was sitting here like, no it's kind of random to see a black i get it i get it i get it but Mm -hmm. why can't he be a bird watcher we need to stop this stigma i can be a bird watcher (laughs) (laughs) i get it i get it i see why you were laughing okay okay i mean this is serious the comment section yeah no no i get it yeah um i mean the comment section is ruthless sometimes i know all right and now I'm going to tell you all something wild. So this is, this happened two years ago in Washington state mm-hmm. to a man named Lee Allen, African-American man. So there Lee Allen was with his older daughter and his younger son come from the grocery store, went into his car. As he's getting in this car to get ready to drive off, a random white woman on a bicycle goes, Help, help, he's stealing my car. What? She's on a bicycle? Yeah, she was on a bicycle. Mm -hmm. Help, help, he's stealing my car. Yeah. And a bunch of people were looking like, wait, what? And she's like, do something, he stole my car. And the black man, Mr. Allen was just like, yo, like, are you serious right now? Like, this is my car. So he gets in his car to get ready to drive off. And people start following off the car like they blocked him in, basically. And of course, they're just, they're knocking the window, get out of the car. It's basically about five white people. If you include her, it's about five white people knocking on the car, get out of the car, get out of her car. And he goes, this is not my car. I'm like, this is my car. He tells his daughter to call the police for help. She starts calling the police. He's trying to drive off. One of the men, like some teenage guy that's like 19 or so, jumps on the roof of the, the car to block him. And he just starts driving off because he's scared at this point. Because he said, because he said one of the other men he like had was strapped. So he believed he was strapped because he kept trying to go in his pocket, right? Mm-hmm. So as that's um, as he's driving off with the guy on the top of the hood of his car, and his daughter's calling the police. The guy that he believed was strapped got on his motorcycle and started following behind, knocking the door for him to get out. Yeah. He was still following him after that. Yeah. So followed him after that. I guess police came, was able to help this man. It was his car. 
he was going home. Yeah. The woman lied. This white woman lied. All she just said was, that guy stole my car. And they attacked. No hesitation. It's amazing the superpower they have. <laughs> yeah. And the saddest thing about this was the guy that got on a motorcycle. I truly do believe him. I really do believe him. Because um, according to the articles and the clip on the news, he did say that he wished he could apologize to Mr. Allen. Because for him, it was like, please understand. It wasn't to attack you personally. I was trying to be a good Samaritan ever since this has happened. <clears throat> People think I'm racist. I've had to distance myself from my own family because they keep getting threats and stuff like that. Please, I apologize. I was just trying to help. Like, I had no idea that she was lying or so. I truly believe that. But here's the and thing, though. Sad. Yeah, but here's the thing, though. In the history of a white woman lying, they are the first to jump in, no questions asked. None. And the fact is, you follow them. You know, you follow what? them off the lot. You know, of course you're going to get backlash. Of course you're going to be called a racist and all that stuff. One thing, I don't know if this is contradicting. I don't know how you're going to feel or our listeners are going to feel. One thing I respect about black, I mean, white men, they will always stick up for their white women. A hundred percent. Well, I'm not going to say like, I would say 95% of the time, or maybe even 90 if I were to give it a number. They will always step up for their white women. And sad as it is, it's 50-50 when it comes to my own community. Mm. I truly feel like 50-50 wise, half of the black men in my community will stand up immediately for a white woman before they do me. And the other half will protect me 24 seven. I can't speak for your community, but that's just how it is. I cannot produce black women tears that will be taken seriously. <clears throat> There's barely any pity on me. Look at R. Kelly. <laughs> so, you know, that's how I can personally end this. Because I think yeah. at this point, for all y'all that are listening, thank you, especially to white women who are listening. I hope you stayed to the end of this episode and know that we are not talking to you personally. But if you got offended, I guess we are talking to you. And once again, you know what to do. At the end of the day, you clicked play, you clicked our podcast, and you chose to stay at the end of this lesson. And if you got offended still, I find it very sad you didn't take away the message and the point of what we were trying to do. And for those of you who are trying to get an insight, thank you, sisters, for sitting there trying to listen to two women of color tell you our experience and tell you what's going on in our community. And we want to talk about how you can be an ally at this moment. Yeah, because here's the thing. I'm feeling very conflicted with this, right? Mm -hmm. Because when I hear story, I was recently told a story. Uh, there's courts involved. I uh, I can't put her business out there like that. And the only thing I can say is, you know, again, just earlier I spoke upon, um, you know, white women harassing Latina women. And the thing is, like, it it's amazing, right? You know, how many people can watch or see the wrong wrongfulness because if even if they don't do it directly like for example you know the the lady who went hiking and she blamed two latina women but it amazes me in this story in this case oh i'm going to leave it as this is that a white woman tears can unjustly put someone in jail you can literally lie again cry and blame someone for something they never done and you can take them to jail you can assist that that is wild to me there are moments where there are situations and the thing is people are silent right and here's the thing just recently i went on somebody's live on tiktok and this person said, no more allies. There are no allies. Because 
even so to explain myself. There are people on TikTok, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, Kat, that do this fake wokeness. Yeah. <clears throat> they would preach for us and woo, yeah, you know, like stand up for indigenous women, black, uh, uh, black, the black community, the Latin community, um, the the Middle Eastern community, whoever it is, the everybody in the Asian community, everybody falls under the POC line. They would get on TikTok, they would write articles and they'll be like, yeah, injustice. Woo, right? Mm-hmm. They're behind us. And here we are sitting here like, oh my God, they finally understand us. They finally understand what is going on in the border when they're like, you know, putting these kids in cages, separating uh, these kids from the family. Ooh, they finally understand that a black man can walk across the street and still get blamed for something that he did not do. But when someone of color questions your allyship, immediately, what do you do? You attack them, go on a defense and take out all the stereotypical things from them. Mm -hmm. that's the fake wokeness is that you would be a trusted ally that we would think because that's how you perceived that's how you 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 tell us right you say you, you have our backs right but then you go around and you turn this around and then you're going <clears throat> to attack me oh i'm gonna call ice on you oh that's why you have daddy issues Mm, at least I have custody of my kids. But weren't you an ally to us? Why would you say stuff like that? And if you see people doing this, why aren't you calling them out? It's just the the insensitivity and disrespect. Like, I don't know if it was you who sent it to me or I found it because we send each other. So yeah, we send each other a lot of stuff. Yeah, I'd be forgetting if I sent it to you or you sent it to me sometimes. No, it's true. It's true. This was just like two, three days ago where it was this white woman singing. Um, what's it called? De- oh, Lord, it's a Tupac song. But the lyrics, she was singing the lyrics to it. And she had written something like, oh, a woman's anthem. Oh yeah, I remember the song, Keep Your Head Up, which is a classic song. And it's very mm-hmm. classic enough. You know, it's in the best songs in the National Registry of mm-hmm. Preservation. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. And the song is basically about a black woman's struggles. Basically, yeah, you're not where you are at. You get judged for being black, but black women know that you are beautiful, know that you are here know that you are valid. She's over here singing this, talking about it's a woman's anthem. No, it's a black woman's anthem. Hmm. I wonder why we came from our women. I think it's time to heal our women, oh, be yes. real to our women. I where they're talking about, Yeah, we need mm-hmm. to heal our black women, be real to our black women. You're not black. Anybody saying you can't sing the song? But for you to sit there and say, it's our anthem. No, it's not. It's my anthem. Because nobody's showing us respect. Tupac made that song to remind us that we are valid. And you took my song and you made it about you? You clearly are singing the lyrics, but you're not listening to what the fucking lyrics are. And I really don't even want to get aggressive again. Y'all have so much passion to sit down and tell me with a black say why you think it's dumb that I have a problem with you wearing box braids, micro braids, but yet you don't have the same energy to sit there on your channel and have that passion to say it's wrong to treat minorities the way you do, whether we black, whether we Asian, Latino or anything. Where is that energy? Where is it? And yet you can walk in with micro braids and get a job, but half the time I'm ghetto. People like Kim Kardashian, they can get a big ass, big tits, plump their fucking lips. But back in the 80s and the 90s, y'all called us ugly. Y'all called us fat for having big asses. Now y'all buying that shit. And let's not forget what 
that's uh, I'm gonna be she doesn't deserve my respect but Juliana Rancic you know what I'm gonna call her Juliana Rancic because you know what she we all can't forget what she did to Zendaya at, at the red carpet no I'm not gonna let that go first off no, I love me Zendaya I love Zendaya and Zendaya was so classy the way she, she ran really that was. bitch to the ground. She you was. You gotta look at Zendaya in that beautiful ass dress. Zendaya had dreads, and you got the audacity to say that she looks like she looks like she smells like weed and hemp oil and shit. But yet the week before Kylie Jenner had fucking dreads in her hair and you and or fucking cornrows, and you had the audacity to sit there and say, I love the look, it's so urban. So it's okay on a white girl with a fake ass body that used to look like a three out of 10 that got surgery to look like an eight. But when a black woman got the same exact hairstyle that is meant for her, she's <laughs> ghetto and smells like weed. But she, you know what? Let me say, like, I need to calm down because y'all have to understand where we are coming from. Once again, we are not attacking white women right now. We are trying to make a point. If you feel attacked, I guess we are talking about you. Because this passion you have for getting offended, I need to see this passion when you're fighting for us. I really need to see that passion when you're fighting for all of us. And that goes for, you know, for the Latin community as well. Listen, here, no, I can't, we can't us. speak, yeah. But I can't speak on the Asian community. I can't speak on the Arab community and all and et cetera. But in my experience, you know what I mean? <sighs> when you hear, go back to your country, do all this, do all that. You enjoy Taco Tuesday, but you got the nerve to spit out, you know, back in your mouth, go back to your country, enjoying your the quesadillas, the pupusas, and all that stuff. And then you have Kelly. I, I, I'm never going to forgive her. You have Kelly Osborne going on TV saying, who is going to clean your toilets, Donald Trump? If you want to get rid of the Latin committee. Like, what in the world? Why would you say that? That was, I like, was just like, no, Kelly, no, no, not Kelly, no. And I thought, like, with the Osbournes, I didn't know they were this ignorant. They like, fooled us. They truly did. Black people rocked with the Osbournes. I loved me some Kelly. Keyword, loved. Like, you know. Also, I do have to address this thing because they always bothered me too. You know, I grew up D.C., Maryland, Virginia, right? DMV never had an issue with people questioning whether I'm Latino or not. And you go on our Instagram, you can definitely see I'm, yeah, I'm white passing because clearly colonizer, right? Here's the thing. When I came over to California and I have people saying, do you speak Spanish? I don't know. I'm offended, of course, because I'm like, yes, I can speak Spanish. How can I help you? You know, when I got to give direction, whatever it is, right? I've had a few people like, oh, I thought you were white. That never made sense to me until we get people like Ariana Grande who wants to look, at, look like us. We have so many white women wanting to act like they're Latina, hoop earrings. They want to live their JLo fantasy. Now you got a lot of white women running around looking what, like Latinas and us who being real Latinas got here in the mixing pot. Oh, I thought you were white. Now, don't get me wrong. There are those like, for example, in Mexico, oh, boy, their ancestries come out. You know, they look straight up Spaniard. But again, it's all colonizing. It's when they came over. However, when you start looking like us, dressing like us in any parts of the community, because white women do, like when, listen, we all love our animes. We love our K-pops. But when you start transforming into something you're not, ooh, Lord. 
Yes, when I thought it was bad with us black fishing, but when you got me hit to how far these white women go are doing with Asian like and yo they're Asian fishing. Y'all need to look this up. Like we can't even post these because you're so like, please look up white women cosplaying as Asians. It like anime. It is crazy. The and it's amount disturbing. of yes, the amount of Asian fishing you got. Th this is not an ally to our communities. When you have to start cosplaying as us, that is not being a true ally. And when people see it, this is what they do. Non-POCs clap them up. And it doesn't help with their delusion when people from our own community do At that. All. Clapping. Clap. Ridiculous. They feed into that. And there's a lot of things we keep saying. And even on TikTok, they keep saying it. Stop inviting certain people into the carne asada, the cookout, the Korean barbecue, whatever you want to call it. Stop inviting them. I learned it the hard way. I look like not, a dumbass clown. Yeah, not everybody, yeah, not everybody deserves to, wait, what'd you say? I say, you remember the Ellen incident? Finish your thought and we'll talk about oh, the Ellen incident. That didn't no, age well. That this. didn't, yeah, that didn't age well. I remember. It um, did okay. It. Sorry. But, so getting back to it, not everybody deserves to be at our venue, at our gathering. Because if you can see that these people can see that the white people are cosplaying as us and you still invite them over, you are not allowed to be in the cookout. You're not allowed to be in the carne asada. No pupusas for you. I don't care. I'm not sharing my food with this buffoonery. Go in the cage with the raccoons. That's all I'm going to say. Listen, I understand. And here's the thing. Here's the thing, right? <sighs> We're not here... We shouldn't be educating you the difference between appreciation and appropriation. It's common sense. Yeah. We're just trying to prevent you from being a dumbass <laughs> like I was. Bruh, please. Okay, go ahead. Tell your story. story. Take okay. my story and learn from it. We can't be inviting everybody to the cookout or okay. the carne asada, as you say, has been. Yeah, or the Korean so, barbecue or whatever, you, you know. Back in the day, I loved me some Ellen DeGeneres. I didn't know, okay, people? Mm. So this had to be, I think, 2015 or, some, or 16, I had posted this. Ellen DeGeneres made people mad because maybe some of y'all remember it. It was her writing on the back of Usain Bolt, and she said, this is how I'm going to um, get go grocery shopping for now on. Usain Bolt at that time was the fastest running man in the world. So I got the joke. I thought it was funny. A good number of us thought it was funny, but my community got mad about it. And I'm just like, can somebody tell me why I should feel offended? Apparently, there was this picture from back in the 60s or some like the 1940s or something like that of a white woman on the back of a black man like he was a horse. And I said, y'all got this from that? That is extreme. I just got that she was riding on his back because he's the fastest man in the world. So he's like a car. That's the, the way I saw it. And I had somebody, too, on this post tell me that I was being a raccoon. That was not their exact words, but they were just like, oh, you're being ignorant. Cause I said, leave generous, Ellen DeGeneres alone. Yeah. The white lady ain't hurt nobody. That was a lie. She's invited to the cookout. I literally wrote this in 2016 people <laughs> and look at Ellen. So it came back up on my Facebook memories, which is very <laughs> evil by the way, to remind me of my stupidity. So I reposted it because as loud as I was back then, I had to be loud on my clownery. So I wrote, this did not age at well at all. I did not know Ella DeGeneres was like this. I swear I did not know. Okay? Learn from this. <laughs> like Tyra said. Don't, Learn please, I'm telling y'all listeners. What, is, don't what did Tyra say? What did Tyra say? Tyra said, learn from this. 
when you go to bed at night, you take responsibility for yourself. And I did. So I am just telling you this story. Please oh. don't end up like I did. I really didn't know Ellen Generous was that bad. And to add to this, which is a little bit related, unrelated, for all of y'all that are still on this whole, it was so long ago for slavery. It was so, let me tell you how long ago it was. The last slave to pass away in America was, I think they said 1943 or 1942. Yasmin, my grandmother was born in 1946. Mm. That wasn't that long ago. Do you know that Ronald Reagan was born the same year Harriet Tubman died? It wasn't that long ago. So yeah, I'll just end it there. <sighs> This has just been an episode, man. Yeah. And you know what? We don't, I don't know. Do you have an answer? Because I'm, I'm sorry. I'm still like, I'm still in this roller coaster ride of how I feel, to be honest, in terms of allyship, what's really going on. And hmm. when you start becoming more socially aware, you just, you just feel sad. Yeah. You just feel sad. You know, but we're called insensitive. Mm -hmm. This is not our land. Go back where you come. And the, everything that comes out of their mouth is just irony. It's just, I, like, I'm, I'm sorry. Like, I don't have an answer for you on how to be a good ally. I mean, we did go with this idea, you know, just listen. Read yeah. books, go to a museum, watch documentaries, like, Re watch the news like do something but yes all of this and you know what's crazy all of this was inspired by chelsea's buffoonery mm -hmm. no i don't care you know like at first I, I had a roller coaster of emotions about like whether i should feel empathy for her or not and to be honest i don't think i do here's the thing sure. listen we all we all here you know i'm gonna i'm gonna say this we all go through different emotions. We all have anxieties. We all go through depression. I have um, postpartum depression. You know, we, we all go through different things in our lives. Some of them, most of them, we don't act out on it. You know, most of us go to therapy. Most of us take our medication but we're not going to go on the internet and start doing this quote unquote expose and do a witch hunt. That's not right. Mm -hmm. Because she did that. She upset so many people in different communities. It's crazy. She even upset her own community, the white women. She even upset the white women in that community. I thought that was mixed because I saw some white women. No, no, it was terrible. mixed. Yeah, yeah yeah no and it was mixed. Saying, but the thing monsters. is but it's 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 nice to know that they were just as upset as us mm -hmm. because they also go through it right we all we all know what heartbreak betrayal we all know what losing a child is we all we've all we've all share this one white woman tears triggered so many people and it led to this conversation so we're mm -hmm. going to leave it as that <sighs> so if so you made it this far we thank you <laughs> yeah and y'all might not believe it but we love y'all you guys support our podcast you guys listen to us and the ones that listen to the end thank you because you're being an ally by just listening to our frustration. It's not, this episode is not meant to attack. We just want to bring awareness to this because like we've stated in these stories, those fake crying, mutilated and got a, sev a seventh grader killed. A 14 year old child destroyed a very prosperous town. Innocent boys are put in jail, missing prom and all. A person's attacked, I mean, a person's accused on the street. Their life is over 40 years for no reason. 
y'all have the power. Y'all tears are very powerful. And the amount of harassment you Mm -hmm. give to other POCs. Yeah. The Asian hate. Yeah. The hate towards the Latinos. After 9-11, you know. Middle Eastern people and... Mm -hmm. I mean, there's a reason why Karens exist. Well, um, this was a very different episode. We didn't want to do what we're geeking on, an official wild story. And, you know, we don't have an artist of the week for, mm-hmm. for this episode because I think we wanted this to be the center of the focus. And I know this episode ran a little bit long, but it was important to tell this story, it was important to raise awareness how dangerous a white woman tears can be. Because it is, and it's sad, you know. Um, Yeah. Any uh, last thoughts, Catherine, before we sign off? I feel like an angry black woman. (laughs) No, this whole episode, because I have moments of this like, ah! So I'm just like, you know, of course, I'm just joking, but I just really hope that the white women who do listen to this podcast continue to follow us, continue to want to learn. I just hope that y'all didn't take it the way that we had no intention of you taking it. Also, also, you know, allowing us to tell, allowing POC in general to tell their story. You just let them tell the story. Listen, don't interject. I'm a white woman, but no. Stop it. Cut it out. Let them tell the story. That is it. Mm -hmm. All right, guys. Uh, This is a little bit different. We don't really have like an official sign off. Um, we didn't even do our intro. We went straight into it. So, um, yeah. So hopefully we, you know, we'll, uh, see you guys in the next video. Hopefully you'll come back, uh, on the next episode and, uh, we have a special one for you in next episode. So, uh, yeah, follow rate, subscribe, and also, uh, please any, uh, POC listening, you know, head over to our YouTube channel, tweet at us, you know, tell your story. It's as well, you know, um, I know we mostly talked about it in the Black and Latino community, but, you know, it's nice to hear other people's story as well. Yeah. And don't make the mistake. Don't be inviting everybody to the carne asada <laughs> or the cookout. I'm never doing that again. I really <laughs> didn't know about Ellen DeGeneres people. I never would have expected that. Uh, it's always the ones oh. that you least suspect it. Before we go, I think just to be, you know, fun, do we want to say who our favorite white women are? Number one, Betty White. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I was like, Betty White, rest in peace. Anne Hathaway. I fucking love Anne Hathaway. Adele. Ah, oh, that woman's amazing. Yeah. Stop <laughs> hating on Adele. Who's hating on Adele? I feel like you have this thing against Adele's greatness. Wait, what are you talking about? Oh, you made me. Yeah, who's another great white woman? Britney Spears? That's a badass white woman. Yeah. I'm just naming them. Julie Andrews, Carol Burnett. You know what I just realized? Judy Garland. Yeah. Sorry, this is last minute thought, guys. This is Women's History Month. Oh, shit. And we're starting off. History Day. Yeah, this is <laughs> one's, yeah, and you know what's crazy? We're starting off. Did you know we started off Women's History Month with Chelsea? Wow. And today's mm-hmm. women's history, like women's like history day. But here's, like I'm, no, as but, we record this episode. Yeah, yeah. But um but here's the thing though. Here's the thing though. Mm-hmm. Um sorry, uh one last food for thought type moment. Um you know what I find interesting is that mm-hmm. I see a lot of POCs, specifically uh, Black women as well, of which they are the most vocal online talking about it. Women's History Month was really not made for POC. 
yeah immediately I knew exactly what they were talking about I was like oh yeah because when you think about it you know they always talk about the first women who did this and some of them weren't really the first so yeah. oh fun fact mm-hmm. do you know that the um feminine pad was patented by a black woman and for y'all who don't believe me google it yeah black women created the feminine pad I know she changed the game for us, our menstrual cycles forever. Shout out to her. Mm. Mm -hmm. You're going to get a lot of people upset. I know. (laughs) I think we're lying. Yeah, they probably would. (laughs) Well, actually it does half the time, but you know. Yeah, they never (laughs) want to believe it. Just like they didn't want to believe. uh, We actually talked about it last episode with uh, Mm -hmm. all this. You ain't nothing but a hell dog. But you knew. You fucking knew. <laughs> All right, everybody. If you're listening in the morning, good morning, afternoon. Uh, happy afternoon, I guess. And um, yeah, good good evening. Um, yeah, we'll see you guys on the next one. We don't know how to end this, to be honest. I know, true, true, true. This is left field. This is left field. I know. And we weren't prepared. And um, yeah, like I, I just, again, you know, I told her I didn't want to do a... Um, an official like wild story artist of the week because i i really wanted this to be our main focus and very important so okay bye bye till next time